Let's bring in former assistant U.S. attorney and Fox News contributor Andy McCarthy because this is history making. You've been following this very closely. A lot of this is highly unusual. Let's get your thoughts this morning as he gets underway. Well, he's got a real point, Dana, when he says that this is political lawfare. And I do think this case discredits some of the other cases against him, which are uh, pretty colorable. This one, people should understand, is the case that the prosecutors, the federal prosecutors in Manhattan, and then the district attorney's office in Manhattan, which has hardly uh, indicated that it wouldn't take a weak case against Trump, given what they have indicted, they looked at this and they decided not to charge it because there are no victims. The allegation is that he inflated the value of his assets, but these are high-end transactions involving very sophisticated financial actors who do their own due diligence. Trump's own financial statements, the statements of financial condition that are the heart of this case, have a disclaimer in them basically admonishing the people on the other side to do their own due diligence and, and mm -hmm. not put too much stock in his numbers. And I think that's why the prosecutors looked at this, this case and decided there was no criminal case. But Tish James, the AG, has this monstrous statute that allows her to bring a civil case even if there are no damages and even if there's no proof of intent to deceive, much less actual fraud. So this case is really very troubling. Uh, Andy, she is on camera repeatedly over a series of years, I would add, saying that she's going to get Trump uh, and, and many more things similar to that. There are those who believe this is ripe for appeal. Are you one of them? I am. I, I think, first of all, this whole New York justice system bill is, is fraudulent in the sense that these are elected Democrats. She is an elected Democrat who, as you point out, uh, campaign for office on a vow that she would use the power of the state to get him, which is a kind of a Soviet way of going about your business. The judge is an elected Democrat. Uh, so the whole system is not like what we have in the federal system where you have appointed prosecutors and appointed judges who are vetted by the Senate, at least in the hope that it will ensure that they won't use their power uh, in an abusive way. In this system, they're actually electing people on a promise of going after individuals, uh, individuals who happen to be their political enemies. So that should be troubling enough. But the other thing is, just in terms of like a sort of Eighth Amendment uh, punishment principle, where you have in this case a situation where the penalty they are talking about is so out of whack with the infraction that it ought to back everybody up. I mean, if you want to tell me that maybe they should fine Trump a million dollars because he inflated his assets. You know, it I wouldn't be my way of uh, doing a system, but fine. That's not what they're talking about here. They're talking about in a case where you have no victims of fraud, disgorging him of a quarter of a billion dollars or more of profits and putting him out of business under circumstances where there's not a single person or a single entity that actually got defrauded here. There's also this controversy about a, a gag order and telling President Trump he right. can't comment. The judge wrote this, that the First Amendment right of defendants and their attorneys to comment on my staff is far and away outweighed by the need to protect them from threats and physical harm. Your thoughts on the gag order? Uh, yeah, I think what the judge is doing, and again, he's an elected Democrat, is promoting this Democratic narrative that when Trump speaks, it's a dog whistle for people to do physical attacks, even when he's not calling for violence. And the idea that he, while running for president, under circumstances where everyone he's running against, Democrat and Republican, is completely uninhibited about what they can say about these cases, but he needs to be gagged, should be very offensive to people. There's no reason that he needs to be quiet uh, in a situation where he's up against people who are actually elected Democrats mm. who are getting a great deal of political benefit out of bringing the case in the first place. This is, he's actually fighting this, I think, Dana, as a political battle rather than a legal one because the elected Democrat judge they told are. him before the trial even started yeah. that he lost. Thank so he can't win. Sense, Andy, thank you. Yeah.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.